So yes, this one gets a little more complicated, but remember to divide the problem into little bits, little segments. So we know that this is probably going to be a, tr a quotient rule, um, derivative of the top term and derivative of the bottom term. So let's look at the top term first. u equals cosecant inverse of 2x cubed minus 2x. Well, what is du dx? Well, we have this term inside the middle, uh, inside cosecant inverse. So we'll probably have to do another chain rule within the chain rule. So let's set another variable. Um, we'll call this maybe z. So z equals 2x cubed minus 2x. So dz dx will become 6x squared minus 2. All right, so going back, we know that du dx is going to equal cosecant inverse of u, which by our uh, table of properties, um, <clears throat> if we remember, is just the negative version of a secant inverse. So that is negative 1 over uh, absolute value of u times the square root of u squared minus 1. So we have to plug our u back in, or in this case, our z. So then we're actually looking at our dz dx. So first we have to find our du dx, then we have to find our dz dx. Well, our dz dx is this term. And we replace this by negative 1 over uh, the absolute value of z is 2x cubed minus 2x times uh, uh, the square root of z squared, 2x cubed minus 2x squared minus 1. Um, and there we have this full, full expression with only the variable x in it. So this is the derivative of our cosecant inverse term. While we have another term here on the bottom on the denominator, that's uh, square root of x plus 5 cosine of x. Well, to take the d derivative of this, we know that square root of x is just x to the 1 half. So applying the power rule directly, 1 half uh, x to the negative 1 half plus 5 times derivative of cosine of x, which is negative sine of x. So we rewrite this. 1 half x to the negative 1 half minus 5 sine of x. So now that we have these derivatives of the numerator and the denominator, we can go ahead and apply the quotient rule. So d, dy, well, rather than dy dx, f prime of x, we call derivative of the top term which is this giant thing. So negative 1 over absolute value of 2x cubed minus 2x times the square root of 2x cubed minus 2x squared minus 1 times the bottom term, which is just square root of x plus 5 cosine of x minus the bottom term, derivative of the bottom term, 1 half x to the negative 1 half minus 5 sine of x times the top term, which is cosecant inverse of 2x, put that right here, cosecant inverse of 2x cubed minus 2x. And of course, all this gets divided by the bottom term squared. So square root of x plus 5 cosine of x squared. Wow. 
All right. Now we have to take uh, the derivative at 0. So there are a lot of x terms, and plugging in 0 is not always a bad thing. It's, uh, most of the time, it's much easier than plugging in any other number. So this might not be too big of a deal. So negative 1 over 2 times x cubed, we know that's 0, minus 2 times x, which is also 0. So 0 times another term, which uh, becomes 0 automatically. So this first term becomes negative 1 over 0 times something minus the rest over the bottom term. Well, we know that anything over 0 is undefined, so this, terms become, this term becomes undefined. And then minus anything else over anything else, this just becomes an undefined part of this function. So this one particular example is fairly complicated uh, if you look at it as one whole uh, machine. But if we divide this uh, machine into separate little parts, uh, we started with a u, the numerator, took the derivative of that. And then we took the denominator and took the derivative of that. And then we combined these into a quotient rule. So we could rewrite this essentially as any other way. So a product rule maybe, a chain rule somehow. Um, but keeping your rules and properties clear on your page will help you solve any complicated problem. Thanks for watching educator.com. We'll see you in the next section.